you know something, uh, ladies and gentlemen? When I first started doing this show five years ago, I was a complete unknown. Nobody knew anything about me. It was all a mystery. I didn't know who you were. Exactly. <laughs> Still, you're confused, yeah. And it was a problem. It really was, until one day, a very talented documentary filmmaker told my story to America, and then everything changed. Take a look. On a cold, clear day in April of 1963, a young President Kennedy ponders a report of Soviet missiles in Cuba. Meanwhile, right in Kennedy's hometown, Brookline, Massachusetts, a baby was born. He was a quiet baby with a sweet disposition and normal and healthy in every way, except one, the size and shape of his head. <laughs> It measures just nine inches in circumference, weighs only about five ounces, and is made of cork wound with woolen yarn, covered with two layers of cowhide, and stitched by hand precisely 216 times. There was always something magical about him. Those who met him could tell right away, this guy, this guy is really special. Those who didn't know him, they could tell too somehow. I don't know how they did that. Conan led a happy childhood in a large family that provided constant companionship. It was the summers at camp away from his family, away from his beloved cat, that were difficult for him. Dear Mommy, camp is very lonely. Some of the other kids tease me and call me stinky. Two counselors held me down and shaved my head. I cried myself to sleep. Please send cookies. Love, Conan. July 17th, 1978. A brighter day in Conan's childhood came Christmas morning of 1977 when he received a trombone. Conan cherished this instrument and held it tightly in his right hand, firmly grasping the slide. As he cast his eyes slightly downward, Conan leaned his head forward and slightly to the left. His right ear was placed firmly on the side of his head. In his early school days, Conan made many friends and showed promise as a student. His fourth grade teacher, Miss Saltzman, gave a positive evaluation. Conan is a good student, although he needs more experience in front of the camera. He excels in comedy segments that we do in class and is friendly to guests, but he is only okay at interviews. He also fights with the girls and has poor penmanship. <laughs> Conan's aspirations to be a talk show host came as a surprise to most who knew him. They thought he'd be a dancer. I saw him dance back in 79. And back then, man, no one could touch him. I mean, he was the best. I mean, he would make you ashamed that, that you would ever try to dance in your life. I watched him dance and I almost got like a lump in my throat, I mean, I'm being serious. Later, however, his skills as an interviewer soon developed. Hi, I'm Conan O'Brien, and here we are with Kate O'Brien, the softball star. Hey, Kate, how you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Hi, Kate, I understand you're on the uh, softball team, your freshman year in high school. Yeah, I was. I was out there in the outfield, left, center, you know, the whole bit. What do you consider your specialty in the field? Oh, just about everything. I hear you're pretty good. Oh, a lot of people have heard that, you know. They've heard it mostly from you, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, how old is the body? About three and a half. Really? What kind of dog is she? Uh, Labrador Retriever. What would you think of the name Nevada? It's an all right name. You know what it means? <laughs> yeah, it's a state. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Not a state of mind. What'd you do this morning? Nothing. Did you go any place? Where? Uh, now between points. Although Conan had many friends, he was slow to discover girls. 
friends and family attributed O'Brien's reticence around women to natural shyness and a firm dedication to scholarship. But few guessed his secret that he was hopelessly in love with a woman he could never hope to possess. Every day he would send me letters. He said we were perfect for each other because we both came from huge families. Sometimes he would include photos of himself to impress me. Sometimes he would send me his report card if he was really proud of it. Oh, and pictures of his cat. Dear Maureen Marsha, straight A's this semester. Mother said you'd be pleased. You're so much prettier than Jan or Cindy. Isn't my kitty pretty? Write back, my love, or I'll cut off my ear to prove my loyalty. Your future husband, Conan. I got a lot of letters back then, but I have to say, Conan's creeped me out the most. But Conan's interests didn't stop there. Dearest George Seward, you are the light of my life. The courage that you display on the bridge of the Enterprise is breathtaking. If I can't spend the rest of my life with you, I shall die. With love, Conan. January 10th, 1976. I get up to four letters a day from this Conan. Of course, it's not unusual for a young boy to look up to the helmsman of a starship. But I gotta admit, it did creep me out. Peace and grace How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. In high school, Conan broke the color barrier. He had to turn the other cheek as taunts of pale face, ghost, and human whiteout were hurled at him. Conan took a lot of abuse and refused to fight back. Really, the existence of extremely pale-skinned people in colleges across America today is only due to his tremendous courage and womanly fear of physical violence. Conan is an institution, you know, I mean, just being here, walking down these halls and knowing that they're the same halls that he walks down, I mean, you don't even need to see him, you just know that he's here. And, I mean, that's why I work here, just to be here with him. Is that okay? Is that what you're looking for? Dear Mommy, today an older boy punched me very hard and then gave me a wedgie. Then I saw a bug and started to cry. I miss you and Daddy and my kitty cat. Love always, Conan. October 8, 1993. P.S. I'm out of underwear, 